Our rivers are the lifeblood of every living thing, a common necessity in every community, a system of arteries reaching out into veins and capillaries. Water becomes the dominant element coursing through all of our bodies. The water of life becomes us. Water disperses and intermingles. This is a story about a river in Massachusetts called the Merrimack, about an epic struggle, a battle against indifference and ignorance. The cure is obvious, like antibodies in an immune system attacking the disease, some people choose to fight. If you were to go back in time nine years ago and you looked across this river, you would see bright colors, you would see orange, you would see blue, and uh, going down the river you would see all these kids' toys, the furniture, the trash, I mean just floating along the edges of the river. That's how bad it was. You can see that the Merrimack has its enemies, those who choose to discard trash and toxic waste into the waters that we all share. Leading the charge to clean this up, is the Clean River Project, a nonprofit organization that recruits the troops, supplies the boats, gas, tools, and supplies needed in a way to get rid of all the tons of waste. Chris is a regular with the Clean River Project, and he's seen his share of salts on the river. I've actually pulled out a 55-gallon uh, bag with paint cans, dripping paint in a circle around it. I mean, people don't realize because they don't want to see it, but I think if they were really forced to watch it every day like they do on the news, I think it would be a different situation for everybody. And even though he doesn't get paid, Chris has a deeper reason for his willingness to be the right-hand man of an organization that does the kind of work he believes in basically to, to kind of clean up the environment and um, you know bring the the fishing back and allow people to be able to actually eat what they catch out of here um, it's a lot to do with um, water purification as far as uh, pulling tires and stuff that shouldn't be rotting in a river many things are pulled from the river it's already done the damage right yep yeah, yeah. including a battery a toilet and bags upon bags of trash. Even a diaper, someone left along with booze bottles after having a riverside party on this isolated beach. As testament to today's uh, cleanup so far and all the stuff that we've pulled off the, the banks here, you know, there's quite a bit of stuff that's left on a regular basis and you know, it, it doesn't matter, we clean up this year, we come back next year, it's gonna be back here again. Regina is a board member for the Clean River Project, and she runs her own environmental business, educating, assisting, and promoting a green lifestyle. Here on the Merrimack, Regina not only digs into the job at hand, but also gives us some advice on how to get more people involved. These folks that are helping us out today, they came out and they're looking at some of the stuff. Some of them are first timers out here, and they're looking at the stuff going, I can't believe they've left all this stuff. It's everywhere. <laughs> Yesterday, they didn't think it was a problem. You know, and then when they showed up, they said, oh, wow, there is a problem. Some of the other volunteers that are here have come back you know, year after year to help out because once they realize there is a problem, they want to do something about it. So the first step is just letting people know that there is a problem and then go from there to, to say, well, now what can you do about it? Oh, man, river. We gotta get you clean Poor man river We gotta get you clean We gotta clean A fresh team of soldiers geared up to make a difference comes from a workforce that has given the Clean River Project a major boost. Thank you. Corporate social responsibility is bringing an energy and a vitality 
to the front lines. Green Mountain Coffee Roasters started about 32 years ago, um, and it started with our founder just simply wanting to give back to the community, maybe one hour a week, and it really expanded to a very grassroots effort where we had a truck driver who literally was driving and said, "Why are we idling when we can turn off?" So then, and then it turned into biodiesel uh, trucks that we use, um, and just being conscious. So it's become very grassroots by our employees, and now it's become more formalized as the business has grown. Lowell has a large uh, homeless pop population up here and you'll see them as we go along the river and uh, they, they'll make their camps here and then they'll get washed out or something happens and then they'll move down the river a little further. So we go along cleaning up all these sites. Here Bill McGrath cleans up an area where people have been living. Not an easy job requiring a serious commitment but Bill tells us there are benefits. It gives us a chance to meet people from other parts of the organization, plus it's a nice team building activity where we're out here as a team doing something that is important to the uh, environment. Braving the cold water, scouring the banks and riverbed, at times bordering on nothing short of a Herculean effort. I don't have to work out today. I know, seriously. Well, my legs are burning. Woo! This is a big tire, too. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it's a great bunch of people. They get dirty, they're in the mud, and they don't care. They're, they're glad to do their part to help the environment, too. Dennis Houlihan is a retired teacher and also gives tours to help raise a little money that covers a small part of the expenses of the cleanups. Dennis is also working on a presentation he plans to give to local school children. Every child I show this to and I show the pictures to, they say to me, why are they doing that? And I said, I don't know why they're doing it. I really have no answer to that. All these kids that I want to see in the classrooms and that, so they won't do it. They'll say, I'm not doing that anymore. Put the, what do you do with a gum wrapper? Put it in your pocket. Where do you get home? Throw it in the trash. That's the way to go. Don't throw it out the window of the car. Every little piece of paper adds up. See the hood right there? You can't see it because of all this pine and all. Oh, yeah. They might have just placed cars here and poured dirt over them. Far worse, the things found in the Merrimack point to a deeper problem. Here we found layer upon layer of asphalt shingles dumped so long ago that trees are growing through them. And to think, that this water is being drawn into the municipal water supply of bordering communities. I think a lot of people just don't look at it so they don't see it, but um, you know a lot of people just enjoy the river for the water and don't think of what's on the shores and what's five feet underneath the water. Um, I think if they actually took a ride with us, they might actually be able to um, understand what we do and maybe believe in us and help us a little more. I started doing this eight years ago. In the eight years time, we've, we've, we've actually uh, gone close to 8,000 tires that we've taken out of the river, over 36 automobiles. We did four miles. We did uh, over six ton of debris on that last pull. We had uh, 50, 115 tires. We had two tons of metal. So you could see the impact that we pulled out of there in that four mile stretch. <laughs> As we said in the beginning, this is the water of life, all our lives. We all have a stake in the outcome. The future belongs to all the kids, and you know, it'd be nice to have a, a river that they can swim in, play in, play on the banks. Of the clean river. Yeah. What I'm doing right now is not going to impact the river in my lifetime probably, but when my kids get older and their kids get older, they might actually have a chance to go swimming in this river and fish. They called you Swift Waters. Your current is wide. You bring vital essence that keeps us alive. 
Old Man River. Why do you cry? Let us help you. Wipe that tear from your eye. Remember so long ago When you teamed with life The fishes were jumping in It all seemed all right Old Man River Why do you cry? Did something deep within fall away and die? I can hear something. It's in the wind Is there a Savior Coming in